Hello, how's everyone doing? What I have for this video is some cement repair in the basement and all the painting I need to do to finish this off right. What is here is the remains of an old basement bathroom that we had removed and now going to cement over. The original floor I believe was a packed dirt that someone previously cemented in sections and had thin spots that I'm going to have to fill in better and also any small spots that need to be filled in will be done. I also have to put some cement where the sections are different different heights and levels so I eliminate trip hazards. In the front section I'm adding a chamfer where the floor is under that first layer of block. This is to hold everything together better and to keep water from seeping in or out. After the cement I'll be ready to start painting. Let me show you how I mix the cement for this job. Okay, so I just want to take a quick second here as we start to see me mixing this. I am narrating over top of my video here mostly because at the time of shooting all this I had an air mover move, moving air in the basement and a dehumidifier to keep the moisture down. So that's why I'm narrating over top of everything. Now as you can see I'm also mixing this is like the third or fourth batch that I've mixed because you can see that I already have some of it done in the background there so what I do to mix my cement is I'll have water in the bottom of the tray open the top with as you saw just a uh, pointed trowel and dump it in and then we'll take and add water on top of it and what I do is I slowly mix it in from the edges so that one carefully not to slosh the water out but you can always add water and this way I get sort of an even mix to start with and I'm not getting a bunch of clumps and lumps in it makes it easier for mixing and as you go along you'll work from edge to edge on a tray if you're using a wheelbarrow same sort of principle. I, I sort of work from the edges. That way it keeps a nice even mixture. I'm not getting a bunch of dry spots underneath. And then when I need to, as it's getting mixed and you run your water a little bit dry, you just add some more water, getting it sort of nice and soaked because I found out as much as you add to begin with you're going to have dry spots underneath but at the same point if you add way too much water then you've got too much water and it will not mix at the correct portions correctly so you do want to add your water when you're starting off you're going to add more it'll uh, consume into the mix but at the same point, as it starts to mix and you start to work it in, you're going to, at w some point when you add water, you can end up adding too much. So at this point, you want to start watching that you're adding enough water but not too much. And as we mix along here, I'm doing this all in real time this is how long it took me to mix it um, so you get an idea that mixing a bag of cement doesn't take a whole lot of time but it's not a quick 30 second type deal it does take a little bit of time to mix it and mix it thoroughly um, we're starting to get it to the right consistency it's mixing nice I don't have any real dry spots it's all becoming one big gooey wet mess that doesn't have any dry spots in it I'm all the way to the bottom of the tray there's no dry spots in it so now I'm just making sure that it's mixed thoroughly and ready to go over and 
start my next portion of uh, patching and repairing. So nice consistency and uh, looks good. It's just about right. Now because I am working down here in the basement I am taking the moment to rinse off the area that I'm working in. It is going to the drain but I have a uh, screen over top of it to catch all the big chunks and then when I got done completely with the plastering, plastering cement, I took the time to hose out the drain. Now we're going to just take our mix and dump it in our spot and it's going to look like I'm really moving but all I did was I sped up the video just a little bit because like most things people just don't like to watch paint dry paint you know or cement dry it's a long time so actually working cement it's not a real hassle but it, it does take a little bit of time so I figured I'd just speed up through the actual action of doing it but we'll show you the whole process of dumping it in the spot and then working it through. Now what I did underneath where the drain was was I took the time to uh, plug the drain because with a plug because that still goes to our vent line and the dr bathroom that's above this on the first floor so we don't want to plug any of that so the water can't and air can't get to where it needs to go so I just put a plug on it and then it's still beneath the cement it doesn't have to be gotten to because I have a clean out right there that the lines can be cleaned in case there's any blockage from you know the stuff that blocks up the toilet drains you can use your imagination on that but the hole itself is plugged so and we're just going to work in the edges um, working it back and forth the cement when it's the right consistency um, and that's where it's it's sort of stiff and thick but the more you work it sort of back and forth just lightly over top of it, it sort of brings the water up to the top and the thin cement so it sort of makes it sort of like a a juicy mix on the top and it makes that's how you uh, sort of smooth it out so I'm just trying to make a nice little smooth finish from the very back because I am going to be painting over all this and I want it to look as seamless as, po as I can so and then on top of it it sort of will keep the taper and flow so it heads back down the floor to the actual drain and it's not like a spot where it's going the wrong direction and then it leaves it like a puddle there in case you ever did need to rinse out the basement floor so so we're just sort of working the last little bit of the corner here this front edge um, the nice thing about even with cement mortar um, it you can work if it's the right consistency it's not dried out you can work it pretty good and then we're uh, able to uh, put a nice finish on it if it starts to dry out it gets a little bit more difficult so that's the end of that sort of spot right there and it looks nice and set so I'm just working a little bit of the stuff towards the edge there. Now this is the one spot where I have a difference between the two heights of the cement. There's like a three inch step there and all I did was I took the time to put my cement down and just sort of worked it as a at an angle that it seemed like it would be a nice slope. Um, towards the left there behind the chimney there that's a little bit steeper because I have a furnace right there and it de you're not going to be walking on it a lot but it's now not so much as a straight drop trip that 
you could actually see the dirt underneath it. So, um, and then that's another drain that went to something. So we just worked around it so that we weren't damaging anything that may still be in use. But at the same point, it makes it so it's a more usable, smooth surface. So now I've moved around to the front. And I've already done the side wall here to our left. And this is the actual front wall and I'm most of the way down through it. What I'm doing is I'm working a chamfer along this bottom edge. And I'm working the cement into sort of the uh, void that's happening starting to happen underneath the brick so I'm working the cement underneath it to help support it and then it also will sort of seal it and then it's sort of it's not straight up and down it's sort of on an angle so it'll whatever water does sort of end up in the basement will stay away from the wall and then we can also uh, uh, it's just for me, it seemed to look right, and it's sort of a nice taper. So, um, if someone can give me a better reason to have it vertical, opposed to on a champ, you know, an angle, let me know. I'm open to new suggestions. Um, now, I am still working at this sort of the same consistency of the mud, the cement and I'm just working it so it's a nice solid piece and then I'm working it so it's nice and smooth because I do plan on painting it you know that's the goal is to have everything nice and solid and then paintable so I don't want to once I have the paint on it to, to look really nasty so so I'm just trying to work it in real good here um, a couple things to keep in mind you want to keep your tr tools, your trowels, you want to keep them clean. Um, I find that if you're getting cement on the top of your tool, just knock it off and clean it off. Clean working surface is a big important thing, you know, because one, you don't have the, the dirt, whether it's the cement, paint, uh, dust from cutting, if you're adding that to your work as you're going along then it just doesn't look that good so and it sort of keeps you sloppy and then when everyone comes in and looks at check up when you're actually there and they see this big mess they don't seem to think you're doing a very good professional you know who would work in a pile of mud so or dirt filth whatever so now I'm just coming around the corner here I'm just going to add the last of this and work it into the corner here and sort of pull everything so the corner is nice and neat so that is me going around the edge and underdoing that underpinning chamfering that wall there now this is one of the biggest reasons why we're down here doing any cement other than the basement bathroom repair was this is where we had three different levels of sections of cement that someone had put in and they were all different levels. Back here where the insulation is sitting, that I assume was the newest. There was a old rotting wall in that spot right up against that edge and they cemented up to it and they had that section so it would drain to a drain that was in the middle of that section of floor. Then you have right in front of the steps. Now that's another section and that's part of what where I was mixing my cement. That's another section and it all drains to a drain there. And then at the lower portion of our screen here, that all was another section that someone just, I don't know, threw some extra cement in there and didn't care how it looked and it was cracking up so this is four bags of cement mixed put in and then smoothed out 
so that you could walk from one section to the other and it doesn't feel like you're either tripping or falling off of a cliff type of a deal it's a nice smooth transition through all of it and then I did that and then I finished along the wall there I brought the chamfer up along there so it blended into this piece so this was one of the uh, first sections I did in the front section so that this was all starting to dry and then I can bring the chamfer up into it so with this done and all the cement done we can then head into taking care of our painting and ceilings and stuff like that. Now I've taken the time to power wash all the walls and clean up after that. I have insulation in all the rim joists. It's just an R13 insulation that I taken and cut and pieced up into there. I've also prepped the walls by uh, obviously the power washing and now I've mortared all the big cracks. So all the big gaps and cracks are filled. Um, anything else that was loose and neat and scraped is done. Um, I had insulation over here in the basement ceiling which was the kitchen floor and all that's been removed and staples removed so that's all ready for painting and the next step is to paint the ceilings and then we'll move on to the walls and then we'll have the floor so we will now look at that we are now have ceilings painted and a coat of paint on the walls um, you'll also notice that I've taken the time that now that I've sprayed it once you'll see a couple other small cracks that were missed because I had so many different colors and textures and stuff that I took the time and caulked all of those cracks and they are ready for another coat I'm just going to wait for this to set up an, a little bit more um, I just painted it and then caulked it and we're going to set up for another coat and while I'm waiting for that I'm going to start cutting in the top edge uh, and we're going to set you here in a spot so you can see that okay now I am got you set up here and cutting in the top edge is real simple I mean it sounds like it is you're just painting along the top edge where I kept the sprayer so I wasn't spraying on the ceiling color and this is OSB board this used to be an opening that went out to the outside through an old storm door cover that was blocked off and this is all sealed up it could be removed if needed but it's just an OSB board OSB board is not the best for painting but could be worse um, and then we're just going to go across then it's not difficult to cut in a basement ceiling and walls because normally the block sticks out from your rim joist so you're just really painting the top edge there um, but when you're spraying you want to stay away from it enough so that you're not uh, over spraying onto that portion so I'm going to move the camera now here so it's a better view shake it all over the place and you can just see just a nice clean line that that creates by um, cutting it in it just looks finished which is what you want and um, I've got that already caulked a spot there so I'm going to set this here and I see a spot there that did get done but in this view it's not been done yet on that pipe it touched up spots on the ceiling so once I get done with this I actually did go through and check for any spot that was missed with the ceiling paint and touched it up with the brush um, same thing with on the furnace I paint the you know the uh, uh, duct work and I bring it down to the furnace well the last of it I just leave it and then I cut it in with the brush there too so um, 
real fascinating. Um, as I cut in, this has got a board right there, and you can see um, I have a clip where I'm painting the steps coming up here. And what I do is, for painting a straight line on something that's not real smooth, um, I've developed a technique that I use where it's I'm just sort of going, pulling the brush, but I'm jiggling it. And instead of going back and forth, that jiggling motion creates the brush bristles just to move just enough. And then the paint comes off the brush, bristle of the brush, and then onto what you're painting. And I'm assuming other people do that same technique, but it's something I've learned to do. And it seems to create a nice line against something if you you know, doing two corners edges. And now the drain lines there, I'm going to uh, cut them in at a point where it sort of blends the portion that's against the wall in with the wall, and then, you know, the ceiling portion with the ceiling. So it's, sometimes it changes with, you know, um, house to house even from side, you know, depending on how the all the drain lines are. Um, this one I'm painting where the one pipe is got where the two pipes come together, the, the Y there. I'm painting, you know, above that is the ceiling color, below it is the wall color. Um, the back pipe is just the vent pipe that goes all the way up through. Or that is, yeah, that's the vent pipe that goes all the way up through and so that one I'm painting from the bell of the and that's cast iron the bell of the cast iron section from that all the way down so um, it's just regular uh, latex indoor paint on all the walls uh, we use a uh, an eggshell finish so in case we want to just wipe it, clean it. It's not a bad cleaning uh, product. You can clean it pretty easy. Um, flats are harder to clean. When you get to an eggshell it's easier to clean the surface if it's got the, that. You start getting to um, satin and then semi-gloss. It's real easy to clean the surface on those finishes. So, um, so yeah, I'm just painting down the pipe and the length of the pipe here. And then we'll uh, start touching up and doing the second coat on all the walls. So I'm just going to uh, jump ahead to that point right now. So I've got the sprayer now and what I'm just going to do is gently, I, I do a first quick spray just to make sure it's spraying. And then I just carefully spray around what I just touched up paint and that sort of blends it and makes it nice and even. And then as you're spraying even a second coat you want to make sure you're overlapping your spray and check for anything you've missed as you go along. And one way to make sure you overlap is sort of just watch your spray and overlap half of your spray that way then you've got a nice good solid coat all the way down through step back and forth and see if you missed anything. Okay, so I'm going to zoom through this and see how fast I can do it. Okay, really I'm just speeding up the time through this um, just so we can get through this a little bit but you can still see that you know I'm painting, I'm doing an overlap, you can see literally see where I'm going along with this and giving a nice second coat, uh, making sure I go around the objects that I've already painted Get nice little finishes on everything. As I'm finishing up this wall here, I'm starting to get little blockages in the gun from the paint spraying. And that's what I'm showing here is I just got it where it was plugged up a little bit. So I'm going to take and flip the nozzle from my wide end to my narrow end, which is actually allows more paint to go through, and then flip it back and I've now cleared the nozzle, if I can point this, and I'm now spraying again a nice smooth coat. Now, 
the reason it's as I set us up to show it, and I'll probably actually clear it out a couple more times here on the screen here. Um, when you have these sprayers, and what I have here is actually a nice top of the line, highest priced Home Depot Craco uh, sprayer, and it has a guard at the bottom that goes into your bucket. There I am flipping it again, spraying it, and then flipping it back, and you can see it's a nice spray again. Um, it's got a filter on the a big grate type filter that goes into your bucket, and if you have new paint, you shouldn't have anything that it's trying to filter out. But that one stays on my on my uh, sprayer because I do tend to use the bucket, and then if I have a partial, I'll keep it, and then on the next job, I'll start with that bucket because we keep using the same color. Now there's a filter that's just beyond your hose that's in the, your bucket just before it goes in the machine there's a filter there then there's a filter that is just after that I mean inches away as it comes out of the sprayer and into your hose line and then it goes through your hose line and then as it enters your spray gun um, there's another filter now I've removed the filter on the gun, the filter that's coming out that goes into the hose, and the filter that's in the machine just before it goes in there. And the only real filter I have is the rock guard that's in the bucket. And that helps keep um, the f flow going, but you'll occasionally have just that minuscule piece that's a little bit too big, and then you have to flip the the nozzle. So let's see, where did I go? I'm painting the wall and I'm out of the screenshot. Who's operating this camera? Oh, wait a minute, no one is. Let us uh, jump ahead to a spot where I'm actually in the shot. Okay, there I am again. Um, as you can see, I'm just finishing off this wall, uh, overlapping my spray, um, still watching for the gun to plug. You can see little particles of the paint actually still floating in the air on the camera. Up oh, there I am. Um, and as you can see, when I do that and I go to the stream, I point further away from me so I'm not adding too much paint to one spot. Um, now you can obviously just catch it with a brush and s spread it out. Um, I guess it's, you could sort of say laziness. I uh, spray it further away so I didn't have to grab a brush and then it just works into the sprayer into the sprayed area as I come along and then I got one little more wall here to do and then I'm going to be at a point where we're going to clean up everything and get everything out of the way and I'm going to start getting ready to paint the floors so now it's time to clean everything up so I will be back in just a moment after a quick break Okay, so after a quick break where I actually didn't break, I took the time to wash the sprayer out and pull everything out of the basement, and we're now ready to paint these steps and the floor. But the best way to paint the steps is paint all your edges and then leave the top for you to walk out with your roller, and you can just then have to paint the top. So what we're going to do is, what I'm doing here is I'm literally just going to paint the edges, nice thick coat. This is porch and floor enamel and it's very resilient. It's a very nice product and it covers in, normally in one coat really well. And you can see I'm jiggling my brush as I come down the steps. I had mentioned that earlier and what I'm doing is I'm painting all the edges where the roller's not going to get and that's all I'm painting. I don't want to paint the top of the step because then you end up painting yourself instead of painting yourself into the corner, you're painting yourself into the basement until it's dry and no one wants to sit down there and watch the paint dry for six to eight hours just so you can come out of the basement. So, um, What I found is one width of the brush on the tread of the step normally is enough so that you can uh, roll up to that and then you're not missing anything and then you want to also paint your uh, riser 
and make sure you've got that a nice coat everything's a nice coat of paint make sure you get everything because until it's dry you can't really come back down and touch it up so um, the best is to take your time make sure you get everything and then make sure you get all the dirt out of the way too and um, give it a nice coat make sure all your edges are done and then you only got your tread left to do um, I'm doing the edges there's a little bit of dirt here in the crack I'm just gonna get it out of the way and then we're gonna clean the brush back off and keep painting so I've got the dirt off the way it's stuck to the paint clean the brush off oh nice clean brush again and we keep moving on um, so all the way down the steps sides the riser and um, just enough of the tread so that you can get the roller on there. Um, when I came out of the basement, that's actually the last step, and I was able to reach down and sort of uh, catch it with the brush better. What the roller didn't get because it had that little uh, split in it and caused it to be different heights there. So um, you do want to catch as much as you can with the roller. So actually, on the bottom half, I did a lot of with the roller, but as you can see. Um, size and it's all set. Now, basement, this section has been painted. I cut it in, I rolled it. It You are going to see spots where it's drying in its spots faster than other. Uh, someone that painted, taught me how to paint said, with latex paint, never look at it as it's drying because get a nice coat on it and let it dry. It's going to look different. It's going to look nice. But as it's drying, it's going to have spots in it, and you're going to keep wanting to go over it, and it's not ever going to look real nice. You're going to see them spots like that, but it's when it's dry, it'll be one nice coat. And you can see I'm all done with the basement. Um, I've got this section over here left to do. Now, this was real bumpy, so what I did was I sort of just dumped it and smeared it into the spots but then I rolled what I could so it's all set and done and um, we're just gonna finish this little spot and paint myself up and out the steps. Okay as you can see as we come down we have the dry floor it's all dry been a couple of days actually since it's been painted and you can't see any of the blotchiness our steps are a nice coat you can't even tell that they were that ugly sort of bluish color our floor has a nice sheen to it, but it's dry and there's no uh, patch, patchiness to it. So looks really nice all the way around. So it looks like I've got a future issue with a little bit of water coming in there. So other than that, the floor looks really nice. So that wraps up this project and uh, we'll move on to another project. Thanks for watching.